Australia's rivers and streams have supported our First Nations people since the dream time. They provided food, water, transport routes, and meeting places. They have ebbed and flowed, shifted and changed naturally over that time. These days, rivers and streams are still the lifeblood of our economy, environment, and communities, providing water and fertile soil to support our farms and the communities they belong to and provide for. They provide habitat for some of our most iconic Australian animals, and the health of rivers will impact on estuary nurseries, seagrass ecosystems, reefs, and ocean water quality. A river catchment is the area where water collects when it rains. As the water flows over the landscape, it finds its way into streams and down into the soil, eventually feeding the rivers that flow to the sea. As the water flows over land, it transports boulders, gravels, sands and silts, and clays. The water and material carried by the river is what shapes our streams and rivers over time. We all live in a catchment. The nature of the land, the weather, and everything we do in the catchment impacts on waterway health. Bedrock controlled streams flow through hard bedrock typically in the upper catchment. Bedrock streams are resistant to erosion, have steep slopes which transport water and eroded sediments downstream in fast torrents. As the slope of the catchment flattens, the sediment eroded from the upper catchment is deposited and alluvial floodplains form from the gravel, sands and silts. Streams that flow through this material are called alluvial streams. Alluvial streams are able to adjust their shape, width, depth, slope, and form through erosion and deposition over relatively short time periods. Movement of sediments during floods creates diversity of river features such as pools, sandbars, riffles, and islands. Floods create and replenish our fertile floodplains and nourish the vegetation along the banks but erosion during flood events can result in the costly loss of agricultural land, roads and bridges, and result in thousands of tonnes of sediment going out into our marine environment. This can degrade marine ecosystems such as mangroves, seagrass beds, reefs and kelp beds to name a few, and have a detrimental effect on fisheries, tourism and the recreational values of our estuaries. To understand why and how alluvial rivers can erode and change their shape and form, we need to understand some river processes. Lane's balance diagram can help describe the balance between erosion and deposition within alluvial streams. Alluvial channels form a balance over time between their slope, stream flow, sediment supply, and channel roughness. The amount of stream power in water relates to the bed slope of the river and the volume of stream flow flowing down it. In flood events we have high stream power and in low flow days the stream power is very low or if the slope increases there is an increase in the speed or power of the water. The stream power is used to transport sediment through the catchment and also overcome the resistance of the channel. Within rivers, vegetation logs and meanders all help slow the water. When water has to flow through a vegetated riverbank, lots of energy is lost trying to overcome the branches and foliage of the vegetation. Many trees work together like an army, but single trees have problems doing it alone. Meanders make a river longer, which reduces the slope, resulting in lower velocities and stream power. Alluvial channels form a balance over time between these key variables. If one component changes, then the balance tips one way or the other. When these factors remain relatively constant, we typically see low rates of river adjustment. However, components that vary like stream flow or channel roughness, like the removal of forests along the bank, create changes to these relationships 
and cause adjustments to flow path and channel shape. If there is a large change in one of these variables, we can see rapid rates of either channel erosion or deposition. It's so important for all of us to understand key river processes and the values rivers provide to us so we can effectively manage our rivers and streams into the future and avoid costs of land loss and poor water quality. It's a cyclical relationship and to keep our economy, communities and environment healthy, we need to know how to keep our rivers and catchments healthy and how to work with them rather than against them. With better understanding, we can all make a positive difference to the health of our waterways, estuaries and ocean environments.